Jones and Golden Gate, we also have commercial frontage at this corner, which is about 98 feet on Golden Gate there. And then we've got um, a parking garage entrance here off of Jones Street, as well as a loading entrance here off of Golden Gate. And then as you can see in the blue and green, these are units surrounding the courtyard on both levels. That's our level is one and two. And then, um, Michael, did you have anything to add here? Okay, so we'll go into um, what our parking levels look like very quickly. So we've got two levels of low grade parking here. Um, it's a 0 0.33 parking ratio, about 101 total stalls. We're including eight electric car spaces in green. Um, two car share spaces in blue, and then we have the per code um, required number of handicapped uh, ADA spaces as well. Any available to the community? This is for resident parking. Resident only. Mm -hmm. And only a, third of, only a third of the residents. Yes. We are limiting the parking to only the 0.33 ratio. The car share will be available to the community. And then here we just have our typical level floor plan that goes through levels four through ten of the building. The building's 13 stories in height um, in total. So we've got units surrounding the courtyard with a couple of uh, balconies as well as you know, along Golden Gate and Jones and a couple that front market. And then 11 and 12 are kind of a similar floor plan, but they've got private terraces. As we continue to raise up the building, we've actually stepped it back a bit to allow more light and air into our courtyard. So it's a big open courtyard that is southern exposure and we want to have um, a lot of light and air into that. So that Would it shadow Bo Decker? It will not. It does not shadow. And then as we continue up to our top what level. We will shadow you on Plaza. There's a tiny corner that May shadow you in the plaza. Come on, there's um, more than one open space down here, Dave. Our, yeah, our shadow study actually shows that it does not impact you in plaza, so that's something we just need to clarify with city planning. So is there any other open space that's going to shadow? Not that we're aware of. So no. you, did a, you did a shadow study already? We did a shadow and study. And how high is it going to go up? 120 feet on Golden Gate and Jones, and a little bit lower on Market. So we are set back here. Um, so this green space is set back off of Market Street, so we're not even up to our 120 height limit off of Market. I think it's 113. And several floors below street level too? Two, two oh, levels below. Two basement mm -hmm. levels. Yeah, the two parking levels that we showed earlier are below grade. Cool. Let's show the rendering. Yeah. So green is the open space on the top floor. And then we've got the renderings here. So. I'll let Michael go into kind of the architecture um, design sure. ideas that we put into it. So as uh, Megan really mentioned, this is the historic building on the uh, corner, Jones and Market Street. Um, as Megan mentioned, this building is not, you know, cannot go up higher. And so what it does is it affords us a light in the air in the courtyard. Uh, you can see here on Market, this is our frontage about 50 feet. Um, and then you can see traveling up Jones, we also have quite a bit of frontage along Jones Street as well. Uh, we have a commercial at the corner of Jones and Golden Gate. We have lobby. And then we have vehicle uh, access here, which is you know, somewhat between the corner and our building. Is there a bike path going to be in front of your building? Uh, uh, yeah, on the, on the street. On the street. Oh, yeah, on the street. Yeah. We hope so. The green zones and reds, and whatever is, they're paying them. Is it part of the? Um, they don't. It's yeah. Not for them. Better. No, no, I know it's not. But have you checked and bicycle checked the seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the yeah. bicycle plane. Is it going to affect people turning into a garage the, and not seeing bicyclists? A better Market Street plan has three schemes that incorporate bikes. Um, none that we've seen having them come off of onto Jones, okay. but what they do propose is possibly making Jones a one-way, so you're only going to have, um, or sorry, a two-way, so you'll have cars traveling both ways, um, but the Better Market Street Plan, I don't even think they've s 
submitted that just okay. yet. So it's still um, very early stages of planning. Also, bikers would be riding on the other side of the street, not okay. where the cars are coming. All right, good point. Kind of security question. Uh, the corner right here of Dunlop Market is known as a high traffic area for illegal drug sales, and <coughs> some of the dealers are known to carry weapons. Uh, what's your plans for any families or children who's plans on living in that building for that corner there? Because uh, if you can answer that uh, building on Jones Street or Market Street, people don't have to go to the corner right there. So that's a high drug traffic and danger area. If families are moving into that building, because everybody knows families, uh, these property values, which, which is probably your target area, families are moving into there, how are you going to make sure that the safety of the families? Yeah, we'll have to, I think that's an ongoing conversation that really the whole community has to There's a, uh, would that shadow the Curry building? The, the, uh, what was it, 130 something uh, Taylor? The Curry uh, ha uh, family housing. You mean St. Anthony's? Curran House. Curran House, sorry. House. Would, that, would that shadow the roof of Curran House? Um, I think also private open space roof deck, so it's not within the requirement of the shadow, oh. um, no impact to the shadow, but we'll have to follow up. Because they grow vegetables on that roof. Yeah, they do. It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not public open space. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Michael, I got, I got a question. I like this first. Question versus comment. Okay, so it's going to be, I end up expecting all of our, I was saying, we need to put this area here with uh, the viewers and stuff. I see his point in some ways, but on good hand, on the good source, on the good side of this point is you can put that building right there, the chase them all away probably, and then you want to the whole game over there. Yeah. Okay. Great Lordship, oh. Great Lordship, Great Lordship, and Great viewers go. That's what we're hoping, and yeah. mostly because one thing we figured out, we can tell it to go away. That, that would really help the neighborhood. It may not be high status, 
for your for your high rent apartments, but it would really be a community benefit. And and any, any kind of business you put in there, we prefer it to be a co-op where it's actually people living in the neighborhood that, that run it, not somebody coming into the neighborhood, and so the money goes out of the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I think this is one of the problems we make too many times is allowing people to come into our neighborhood and then sell us a pitch. Uh, but it would like they have to do in our neighborhood, and then they take it, they're sucking the money out of the neighborhood for uh, going living somewhere else, and the money doesn't stay in the neighborhood. <coughs> so the, we'd like to see the money all that stay recycled inside the neighborhood if possible. Yeah. And, and just, um, to, just to finish with the community benefit, <coughs> you really need a community, some more community meeting space. Uh, just a room, just a, even a small room like this, or twice the size of this, that is open to community meetings would be a huge benefit. Something that was handicapped accessible. Uh, be big benefit to the neighborhood. Thank you, you. you get a lot of goodwill for something like that. Denise? Yeah, I had a uh, follow up on that. I know you're required to do 12% uh, of uh, below market rate, but can you do more than 12%? I mean, I, we need more, we need 50, we need 20%. Yes. I mean, I think all these developments, I, I think it should be lifted from, you know, higher than 12%. But if you could, you know, set, set an example or something to really look at that, to give us more um, low market rate units in this complex. Yes. 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 Yeah, because I mean, yeah, there was a slideshow in front of the Planning Commission, Sean, that we already have, which are going high end, over 200% already as of this month. And then you're going to be in the future, and you're only adding to that. And where the low and, and, and middle uh, size uh, price units are not uh, not being built in San Francisco, mm -hmm. so and that's big bang on what you're saying. And since Georgetown owns lots of property in San Francisco, I think it only behooves the big uh, Georgetown to it's you know, they can cross the street uh, and other properties. I think you should uh, it would only go much better for your other uh, venues and properties to show that you care about. And as far as uh, putting uh, whatever you want to put in your uh, uh, commercial space, again, that, that's uh, done work because we don't know the timeline and how long it's going to take you to build your, your, your property. And, and of course, um, there's a separate entity to, or arm of you or, or whatever uh, that deals with the real uh, commercial space. So, this is a problem. We never heard the breakdown of how many one, two, and three bedrooms. Basically. 